Hello everybody and welcome to part 5 of creating a custom forum for your website using PHP and MySQL. And before we guide everyone through the next couple of scripts, we want to show you some functionality beforehand so you know what you're about to build. And the source files for the Web Intersect forums, what I'm building here, is going to be available free. All of the code that makes up all the source files will be in version 1.34 of the Web Intersect software. So you go to Web Intersect Home, you go to Download, and right here there'll be version 1.34. You click that and you'll be able to download it, and you'll have the forum scripting. It's not going to be in the configuration file, so you have to create your own tables for the forums. It's not going to be in the configuration file for 1.34. You'll have to view the videos and check out the the tables that you have to create and the fields inside of them within the videos. But the scripts, all of this code, like the home page for the forums, the section page, all that's going to be included. And I'm going to finish up walking you guys through the scripts that make up this basic little forum system. Then later on tonight, I'm going to package up version 1.34. Okay, enough blabber. Let's show you what's going on here. So if we click this first forum, PHP Dynamic Scripting Help we can see that there's a couple of posts that have been made it's a couple of new threads or new topics and this is all just testing stuff we'll probably we'll probably delete all of these and start over when I launch my forum actually and I also want to let you guys know that I'm going to make mine a little bit nicer on my own off of video after this tutorial series before I really open up my forums because what we're offering is a a tutorial on the foundations of building your own custom forum system. We're not really going to spoon feed people a, a really nice polished product. That you guys can do on your own at Web Intersect. We're about to open this puppy up. I'm going to make the forums and I'm also going to make uh, tutorial and file sharing systems. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a tutorial for the file sharing systems, but after the forums, I think I'm going to let the member system go crazy with it and share files with each other let everybody know what they've done in their system how cool it is maybe you offer the scripts to other people that might want that functionality and things like that so the member system itself or the member base will come alive hopefully and start sharing things and I can just kinda sit back and let everybody amp up the system like that if they want to share or if not everybody can just wait on me but I work slow Okay, so even though my forum is not really launched yet and I don't have navigation on my homepage to the forums, there's some people who are posting in here. I've been posting in here to test things out and I'm going to show you how it works a little bit. So we can go to the, and I added jQuery for the reply mechanism and I'll show you how that works in just a second. So let's click on this SQL syntax and MySQL database help forum. And somebody says, needs serious help here and I can answer this person's question and I'm going to right now so I'll show you how it works alright so I'm gonna go down here to post a response and if I was not logged in I wouldn't see this post a response button it would say please log in to respond let me click that and you see a nice form pops up using jQuery it's just a hidden div with a form in it when you press that button it pops open okay so here is my answer so I'm trying to help as if as if the best I can with my answer here I'm gonna press submit your response and let's see what happens we're using jQuery and its Ajax mechanisms to send to the PHP and MySQL and then get a response back without ever leaving this page doing it in real time on the page and let's see what happens boom you see the little loading thing that was there for a second the little green loader bar and then the answer was placed directly on the page with no refresh I could even put in another response directly submit response boom now if anybody goes to this thread or if you go back to it you'll see that your posts are there and it shows how long ago you posted and who you are so people can click that and go to your profile on the site so that's pretty much how it works at its basic basic level and I'm gonna tell you guys right now I'm not gonna show you how to implement any specific WYSIWYG editor out there. What a WYSIWYG editor is a little piece of JavaScript software that you can write on your own or download free online 
And what it is is a rich text editor. It will allow people using your forms to easily bold things, underline them, make links, and do other various things like that that people are used to doing, like when they send email or whatever. And you'll you'll see at the developed PHP forums, we use a WYSIWYG in place in these forums. I use a free WYSIWYG. I think mine is, uh, the one I'm using there is, uh, I forget the name of the WYSIWYG. I'm, I'm not even sure if that one's in production anymore from the people who made it, but there's lots of free WYSIWYGs online that are JavaScript based that you put into your forums to give people bolding ability and things like that. You can also write it custom. And there was a while back I was showing people how to do it in Flash. So you could even, if you're skillful enough in Flash, I have tutorials here on, where is it? The Open Code Flash WYSIWYG Rich Text Editor. You can throw a Flash uh, Rich Text Editor in place there if you're good enough to know how to parse it using ActionScript and PHP. And in Develop PHP, for the longest time, I had a Flash WYSIWYG in place in my forums. But then I switched to a JavaScript one about, I don't know, two years ago or a year ago. But anyways, you saw the form I had. It's just a text area. So if we go back to that thread, and if I go to post a response, it's just a regular text area. There's no WYSIWYG. Nobody can bold nothing. But I programmed it in such a way it'll give you the ability to preserve line breaks. And if you wanted to put in a code tag like this, that would go right in, no problem. So say you wanted to put script tags. I'm just right in just a test. See? There's the script tags, but the script tags are not active. They won't operate because we're using HTML chars. I'll show you what we're using in the script. Alright, so now you see how it works. At its basic level, this is all you're getting from me. I'm not going to give you a super polished software for your forum. That you're going to have to do. Hopefully you learned a little bit something about how your database needs to be structured and all that kind of stuff and PHP queries to the database that will allow you to go further and make your system awesome. And maybe some people at Web Intersect might polish this forum up or make their own that works with the Web Intersect system and they might offer it somewhere. I don't know. But I know, I'm just saying that because I know a lot of people are going to beef at me and they're going to be like, man, I wanted this feature, that feature, this feature, that feature in my form, and I wanted you to make it, Adam. I didn't want to have to. You can't get pissed off at me for that. I'll smack you in the face. Okay, so if you're working right alongside with me in the videos, you would have this page ready to go. This is your forum homepage. And then when you click one of these sections, you would also see this. Now, what we haven't explained yet is the create new topic page. When you click this button to create a new topic into that forum so somebody can make a new thread, we haven't discussed this page yet called new topic. So that's what I'll be doing in this lesson. So let's go into the code, open, new topic. And let's also take a look at section. So section was given this button, which is a form. And I chose to use a form this time instead of a link. So I changed that link that we had to a form. That way it posts variables kind of behind the scenes a little bit. And you can see what that form consists of. And remember, if you guys can't see all of this code super clear on YouTube here, version 1.34 of the Web Intersect software is going to be out very soon. And it's going to have this, all these scripts that we're going to be discussing here and the ones we've already created are going to be free for you to download so just hold on a little bit when version 1.34 of Web Intersect is put out you'll have all the code so basically this page is just like it was when we left off except that I added the breadcrumbs div here and basically all the breadcrumbs div is is something that will allow the user to navigate the forums more easily go back to the section they were on and things like that and you'll see how I coded that all out you can see there's the div that holds it. Div ID, breadcrumbs, and there's the links. At this point, it doesn't really have to be dynamic because it just has to lead them back to the forum homepage on this page. When you get to the next page, that's when you want to have some dynamic breadcrumbs going on, which you'll see a little bit of that too. And breadcrumbs is, if you don't know what breadcrumbs means, it's like a trail. Like when you're walking through the woods, you might drop breadcrumbs. So on your way back, you don't get lost. You can follow the breadcrumbs back home. 
But then what if a little rabbit comes and eats your bread? Oh no! Okay, so basically on section PHP, there's a form now that makes up the button, which is the create new topic button. They click that. Then we're going to send them to the create new topic page, which is, which is new topic.php. And it's going to send a couple of variables that are necessary for that page to know in order to process things, which is the forum ID and the forum title. This, that way the page knows what forum section that this new post is going in, or this new thread. So now let's move along to discussing newtopic.php, which is a page you guys have not even seen yet. All right, before we discuss the PHP code in the top of that file, let's look at the design view in the HTML. You can see here we have breadcrumbs again. And here is dynamics going on in the breadcrumbs. So let's see what's going on there. Div ID breadcrumbs, there's the static link to the Web Intersect homepage. There's a static link to the Web Intersect forum homepage. And then here's a dynamic link to section.php with an ID of this forum section. And this forum section title's name is going to be right there. You see it? That's dynamic that's coming in dynamically so if I was at the forum home and I created go to create a new topic in this section create new topic you'll see it's different now that's how it's dynamic okay so in, in that page we have a form and you can easily see that form sitting right here the form tag is indicated by in Dreamweaver anyways indicated by this red dotted line everything within that box is in the form so you just put a line there that says create new topic in the whatever forum section this is dynamically you spit that out right there then you create your form in the form you can see all the code right here very clearly that's the whole form so what I'm doing is posting to a script called parse post.php which I'm going to explain to you in one moment making sure the post type is being sent as a because this is a new topic so the database has to know when this topic gets put into it that it's an A type. If it was a reply or a response, it would be a B type. So in this instance, it's an A type. Now this this input is the topic author, and you can see on or live on the site, my name is sunk into that field, but that field is disabled. I can't change that value, and that value does not get sent to the PHP. That's pretty much just for show to show them their name. Then input post title. That's what they type in right here. If I only put in a couple of letters it says your title must be at least 10 characters long you don't have to set yours up that way but I just wanted to make sure people aren't writing in that I hate when people do that I want them to be descriptive with their title so under where they put in the title we have a text area here and that's shown in the source code right here text area name is post body column 64 rows 15 actually columns doesn't even need to be there because I have the style with 96% set on that box. Now, here's the thing. If you're paying attention and you want to know how to integrate it, what you see is what you get rich, rich text editor. What you have to do is replace this text area with your WYSIWYG or whatever you have for allowing people to format things. Very simple. Just replace that text area and your form should still process just like it does set up here. Now here's the input button. That's just the create my topic now button which is sitting right there you see that and we're sending a couple of hidden variables there's four of them actually one is forum section ID one is forum section title the other is this members ID and this members password and that's pretty much all that form is doing it's very very simple and this page is scripted just like the others it has the, the header the dynamic header in it the dynamic footer so that's all that's really going on in this page now let me talk to you about the JavaScript validation. Now this isn't jQuery or anything. This is just uh, JavaScript where we're validating the form and you can change this to be jQuery instead if you'd like to add that. But I'm keeping mine simple. I might change mine over later. We're using jQuery in the reply form big time. But in this one, no jQuery. If you go to the actually look at the threads, the reply form, this thing is all jQuery. The way this thing works is all jQuery in Ajax the create new topic page there's no jQuery going on if you'd like to you can make it have some jQuery functionality but mine is just a JavaScript function that's gonna validate my form make sure that the form post title has a value if it doesn't 
You give an alert, please type in a title for this topic. Else, if the form 1 post title value length is less than 10, I spit out an error alert that says your title must be at least 10 characters long. And else, if the post body is empty, tell them please type in the topic. None of those conditions meet, it returns is valid, which is true. And that will allow the form to actually post to the PHP script, which is parsepost.php, which I'm going to explain in the very next video. Now, parsepost.php is a very important script to the whole system. You might want to stick around for that one.